Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you, uh, wherever you are around the world. Uh, my name is Jean-Michel Fontenot, a professor of cello at the San Francisco Conservatory of Music. And on behalf of my cello colleagues, Jennifer Kolb, Bonnie Hampton, and Emo Siang, and of our entire conservatory community, I welcome you to our first Tiny Dome Masterclass. Uh, we have been presenting these Tiny Dome events since March 27th. Uh, at the start of the sheltering at home in California and have witnessed an abundance of talent and creativity from our students, alums and faculty. And um, also I have to talk about our staff, uh, all these people behind the scenes who are working tirelessly to make all of this possible. We also want to thank Harry Winston for their generous support of the Tiny Dome series. Uh, in today's masterclass, uh, you will hear four of our student cellists. Uh, they have each prepared a video recording uh, to avoid any possible issues with internet lag. Um, and we will be playing these videos at the start of each student's uh, coaching. Um, also, at the end of the masterclass, time permitting, our guest may have a little bit of time to answer some of your questions. So if you feel inspired to do so, uh, please write your questions in our live chat box on the um, YouTube page. Uh, you should have the link uh, to that in case you are on the SFCM web website. Uh, so, we are very excited to, has, to have with us uh, for the first time in this school, cellist Johannes Moser. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much. <laughs> one of our most brilliant cellists today, um, and he's pursuing a vast and eclectic career around the world. Um, by looking at, at, at your bio, Johannes, I, I, I can only quote some of the things there, um, you know, soloing with major orchestras, uh, doing a lot of chamber music, uh, new audience outreach, uh, exploring repertoires from early style to new music premieres, and also mountain biking. Yay, wow, <laughs> I'm so impressed. <laughs> and of course, uh, doing online cello masterclasses. Um, so um, I know it's just online, so we can't hear any noise, but let's have a loud virtual round of applause for you, Johannes. And we're very honored to have you with us today. Yay. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you Jean Michel. Thank you very, own. very much. <laughs> I, can, I can hear it from San Francisco all the way here Yay, to, to, right. uh, to Munich in Germany. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, it's, it's interesting that you mention all my activity around the world because, of course, now all my activity is around my living room. And um, I guess that goes for, for all of us. And this, this weird moment in time where in our profession where, where we go out in the communities and, and onto the stage and onto it, basically into people's lives. Um, and that is now stopped. I think um, together with theater and maybe tourism industry, this is probably uh, the most visibly affected, I would think, um, just because um, what we do now is just restricted to this, yeah, to this digital moment uh, that we have. And um, I think as weird as this is, this is also a chance for growth mm -hmm. and a chance to explore um, an area that in classical music has been like, neglected for a long time, I think. And so maybe, you know, with all the uh, negative things that we are experiencing with it and with all the hardship that comes with it, maybe when we come out of it, we are, we've also distilled an essence from it where it's like, well, now we actually know how to do these conferences online and now we know how to actually have good sound and not just a crackly um, <laughs> sound going on. And, and, you know, thanks to all the wonderful people behind the scenes, this is made possible now that we actually have, have a decent sound um, in, in these conferences. So um, I hope that we, that we come out of this um, in positively in some way. Um, with all the sacrifice that we're doing. Now, you already said it, um, there is going to be some time uh, for questions and for for maybe also observations and all that. And um, I'd love to to take all the questions that, that come our way. And um, Jean-Michel, if you're okay with that, maybe we'll just dive into it. Yes, um, absolutely. So the, our first student cellist is Zoe Lee. 
Uh, she's from Taiwan, uh, currently still in San Francisco at the conservatory's door. And she is finishing her sophomore year and she will be playing Bach third suite in C major, the Sarabande and the two bourrées. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
Wonderful. So I just unmuted myself here. I hope that's all right. Hi, Zoe. Hi. Nice to see you. And uh, congratulations. Um, I have to say you play the Sarabande with, with a lot of uh, feeling and a lot of immersion. And you also uh, play the Bourrées with, with a lot of elegance. So I, I really appreciate that. Um, I Actually, I was already wondering in your video, is that a Canadian flag in, in, in the, uh, in the yeah. background? I mean, my is it? Room. <laughs> I ah, mean, I'm very Canadian good. Prince <laughs> Fantastic, because I'm half Canadian, oh, so yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, I just I saw the lower part and I was like, ah, this could be <laughs> <laughs> so excellent. Um, Zoe, let's um, let's talk about the Sarabande as a dance in general. Um, what is the signifying rhythmical element that that signifies? most Sarabons, would you say? Mm, I felt like the third beat is like more like go to the first beat and then huh? second. I feel like it's like walking very slowly. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually the most important thing is the second beat. Yeah. Because mm. the second beat is strong. Yeah, <laughs> which which is often unexpected but when you look at the harmonies um it makes a lot of sense except for one um do you know in which suite um there is an exception it's actually in the fourth there he's not going to the second beat but he's going to the second bar yeah oh. so bach bach is playing with that idea of going to the second beat and he's like, ah, I'm going to mix it up a little bit and I'm, I'm just going to go to the second beat. Doesn't matter. Let's talk about um, this suite, the third suite. Um, now, when you have a heavy um, beat, it would make sense to put it on a down bow, I would think, no? Mm. Like, yeah. if, if, you, if, you, if you naturally, I mean, you wouldn't play... <laughs> definitely playing yeah so when there is a heaviness it goes it goes on the down bow that is just how our physics are are made mm -hmm. yeah um and i want to share with you something that that absolutely changed my life i don't know if you heard the name nikolaus Harnoncourt, um but he was a very very influential um austrian a conductor and he used to be a cellist in his in his early life but then he became a conductor of um, performance practice and also of um, uh, yeah just the idea to to come back to the old principles of how the music of Bach Beethoven Handel was performed yeah and he has this very interesting theory you know the down bow sign which looks a little bit like a letter N mm -hmm. yeah um, there is a Latin word called nobiles and so N stands for nobiles. Nobiles are noble men and noble women. And they, because they're noble, they have a lot of money. And so they, they get really fat. And uh, so the noble notes are the heavy notes. Yeah. V, on the other hand, like the up bow sign, hmm. he relates to the Latin word viles, which are peasants. Yeah, viles are... Uh, the ones that don't have any money left because the nobiles took all of it. Yeah, so they are the skinny ones. So those are the notes that are weak, and so they go on the on the up bow. Yeah, and just as a, as a thought experiment, let's go through the the first two bar uh, or three bars, and look where are noble notes. So that means notes that are heavy namely the second beats and probably also the first beats. And let's just put the letter N over them, so a down bow. Okay. And the less important ones, we'll put a V on top of it. Yeah? So, first note would be nobiles, I would think, no? First to major chord. Exactly. And, and by, by playing... Um, you all automatically get a wonderful resolution. Yeah? Yeah? So, and also the, the up bow gives you the chance to do what you wanted to do in the first place, which was the third beat 
walks towards the um, the next first beat, which I think is a wonderful thing, yeah? So that we keep the dance motion. And this is another thing that I wanted to, to talk to you about. I feel that you let the dancers stand for a little bit too long. I wish they had the chance to move a little bit more fluid. <laughs> So that, yeah, in German we, sh we say it's ein Schreittanz, which is Schreiten is not walking, but actually it's moving like this a little bit. Yeah, you can't see my feet now, but, but, but it's, you, you, you can imagine, yeah, it's, it's not stomping along, but it's, it's just sort of going from one to the next. But in order to do that, I need to feel the connection from one beat to the next. You want to give this a shot? And, oh, and one more thing. When there are 10 cellists in the room talking about Bach, there are usually 11 opinions. So you can feel free to take my opinion at the end of the class and throw it in the, in the trash can, yeah? Because I don't know anything. I know as much as you do, yeah? So, so we are just experimenting here in this lovely safe space, yeah? Okay, okay let's try it. Yes, okay. So now now I have the feeling the bow is already taking care of a lot of the music for us. Yeah? Because uh, just by the nature of physics work. Mm -hmm. yeah? Now, let's look at the harmony. Um, in, the, in the first bar, um, what is the bass doing? Ah, let's look at let's look at the bass. Yeah. So, what what do we call the first um, the, the the first step of the harmony? Tonic? It's not the it's the tonic exactly. Yeah. Perfect. Yes, very good. So we have the tonic, and then we go to the G, which is relating to the to the C, which which step? Uh, it's dominant. Dominant. Absolutely right. And um, so we have. Um, so it makes absolute sense to do that. Dominant, as the name implies, is dominating the tonic. Yeah. Hmm. So it's it's definitely stronger. Now, when we come when we come to what harmony do we have here? It's a dominant of the dominant. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because we go because we go to the subdominant later on. We have a C um, C C seven, yeah. Then we go to to the, the subdominant, yeah. So I would imagine that is definitely stronger than, yeah. The only question that you have to decide now is when you have is this stronger than this? The I think the second major is stronger than the first major, right? Say, say again, sorry? Oh, the second measure, the downbeat of the second measure is stronger than the first beat of the first measure. I, 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 feel, I feel the same. I feel the same. Just by the nature of, of the dissonances that we have here. Yeah, this really calls for a resolution. Yeah, so um, also harmonically speaking, it's, it's stronger. So now we have created a hierarchy. Why don't you show us what that sounds like? Okay. Beautiful. Um, and Zoe, I, I would I would love for you um, to take your own idea of that third beat, not only being the resolution. <laughs> But also, 
being sort of the upbeat to the next. Yeah. Okay. There are often music uh, notes in music. You find that with Bach, but you also find it in, in Schumann's and Brahms' music and, and, and all these masters, where a note has a double function. It ends something, but it also continues something. So this note has has two energies. Yeah, ending energy and continuing energy. Okay. You want to give that another shot? Yeah. Okay, very good. Now, it's still a little bit rough around the edges, but you get the idea, yeah? yeah. Um, of course, now we want to avoid sort of a unnatural crescendo, but it's... Um, it's more that my being is already thinking of the next, but, oh. but in the sound wise, I'm phrasing it off. Yeah. Let's, let's give it one more try. This is important. We are back in C major. Mm. Yeah, let's not take that for granted. That now we've completed the. Um, we're back. Yeah. Mm. So let's let's find a. Um, we're home for just a little while as a point of relaxation. We've talked a lot about um, harmony and about rhythm. Let's focus on the function of notes. We already discovered one double function note, which I think is cool. Well, two of them, actually. Um, now, you have the chords, which are, you know, defining what the architecture is, but you also have notes that just walk from one chord to the next, so to speak. And I think this is a clear case. <laughs> that we arrive at the next harmony yeah mm -hmm. so let's not give them the same in 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 uh, latin you would say gravitas or the, the the same importance or the same heaviness as the chords but actually like i don't know do you do any yoga stuff like that yeah like, I do you, yoga. you, you Oh, perfect. Great, great. I just started again. It's great. It's a little hard on my wrist, but it's, it's fantastic. So you have you have poses. Yeah, let's just say the chords are the poses. And then you have movement with that goes from one pose to the next. Oh. So you go from, I don't know, downward dog to warrior two or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And let's not make that movement in between as heavy as the as the positions. Yeah. So okay. so we fix ourselves in, in the chords, but then we go on. Yeah, so let's go from this chord and show me how you walk from one thing to the next. Yeah, we have here, we have again, we have, oh, sorry, um. If you play up, you have a very hard time showing me the, the dissonance that I have in the seventh for the resolution. So that is kind of the concept that that I would like for you to to just play around with a little bit mm -hmm. and and see what what can I do with that information. If you decide to come back to your old Boeing, at least you've experienced what it feels like to have a heavy two, mm -hmm. you know. So if, if you say at the end, 
it's not for you to, to, to do the retake or you feel like you would like to have more legato, that's completely fine. But at least now, once we felt, ah, this is what the heavy two feels like. Okay. Yeah? Shall we look a little bit in the bourree? Is that yeah. all right? Yeah. yeah? Um, now, I, I think you, you play this with a lot of panache. I, 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 think, it's, I think it's really great. Um, I wonder if these two notes could actually um, go towards the, the upper note rather than to be to be very heavy. What 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 is what is a bourrée? What does that mean? Where does it, the name come from? Um, it's a dance, right? <laughs> and yeah, they're all dances, uh, uh, yeah, honestly, like, <laughs> except for the for the prelude. <laughs> it's like the. Like very light dance from the from the upbeat to the downbeat, like keep on like uh -huh. very fast. <laughs> yeah. Now I was I was actually looking for the literal meaning, and uh, bourré is is a dance of a peasant. Yeah. Uh, ein ein bourré ist ein Bauer. Ein Bauer is a peasant. That is that is the the German. Well, bourré is actually um, I think a, a, from a Dutch Dutch origin. And then Bauer is the German version and peasant is the English version. So it's a peasant's dance. We have two peasant dances. Yeah. And obviously um, that peasant is vastly different from. Yeah? But um, I want to, you to put your thinking cap on um, just by yourself because you are a very creative person. So you, you will come to great result just to find out what is the difference between a bourré, so a peasant's dance and a menuet. Menuet being something that was more danced at um, uh, at the court, you know. So this is this is more of a dance that is, um, how should I say, it's it's more elegant, yeah. And bourré certainly has has more depth and more 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 um, more punch to it. So you played that well. But I would like for you to find a tempo where you don't isolate the notes by themselves, but actually. Where I have the feeling that the yam, which invites me to ah, this is a forward motion. Yeah. Very nice, very nice, very good. Let's just take. Um, sorry to interrupt you so quickly, um, but uh, I just want to make the most of our time. Let's look at again harmonically what is happening. Uh, let's let's play the bass. We are in C major, so probably da, 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 we're in C, yeah. Yes. No, actually, it's just a very simple cadenza. It's one five, five one. Da, 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 yeah and you know when i when i play this i i imagine there is there is this peasant who's who's been playing the double bass all his life you know and it's is actually um not a very virtuosic part yeah um and so when you um come to that dominant um, stay dominant. And now we got to tonica again. Resolution, yeah? Because I heard a lot of you playing an accent on the resolution, on the harmonic resolution, yeah? Mm -hmm. So maybe just so that you don't have to look for the, for the harmonic bass notes, it would be great if you could analyze um, just now that we all have a little bit more time, you analyze the bass and you see just as an instruction manual, tonica, dominant, dominant, and tonica, yeah? You know, we all are sort of looking in the dark for the interpretation, how to, how to play Bach and do play like this, or do play with vibrato, with non vibrato and all this. We have very clear instructions from Bach. We have harmony, and we have rhythm. And with that, we can already do a lot. But you need to know your harmony, yeah? Because these are not 
melodic pieces. These are harmonic pieces, yeah? Which brings me to the bourrée number two. Please don't fall in the trap of making a, a melodic line of it. Yeah? Because we are still in harmony. Yeah. Um, just just so that we always keep in mind, this is this is a four-part harmony played by an instrument that can maximum play two notes at the same time. Right. So that's. That's that's what I remind myself always, because I I've always so fallen into the trap of, of looking for melodies, yeah. But there are no melodies here, no. yeah. Okay. In my opinion, in my humble opinion, <laughs> Zoe, this was great, wonderful. I hope this was a little bit of food for thought for you. But I think probably we, we should move on to the next okay. one. Thank yeah, you, it was nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
I unmuted myself here. Yeah, wonderful, Carlo. Really, really great. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I wonder how to go about this because, you know, you play this with such uh, conviction in the style that you do that I wonder if my comments that, that I would give are not going to disturb you more than they're going to help you. But, you know, at the, at the risk of you just, again, throwing it out uh, at the end of this lesson, um, maybe I'll share a little something. I'm sure you heard the lesson before where we talked about the Sarabande, um, uh, just to try these two, two down bows uh, ones, yeah? Um, but one thing that comes out very strongly in in your playing is that you enhance the notes by, by a very significant vibrato. And I want, um, I want to do a little experiment with you, is whenever you want to play a vibrato, instead you play a trill. Because in my humble opinion, a vibrato in Baroque music is absolutely possible, but it has the function of something much higher than just an, um, a beautification of the note, like a little bit of rouge and a little bit of, you know, uh, just making this, the note sound better. But actually, the vibrato works as an ornament. So let's replace the ornament just as a test. And whenever you feel you want to vibrate a note, instead you trill, okay? Just like sort of as an alarm bell. So let's, let's give that a shot. And the servant? Yeah, let's try it. Uh, let's just do like two bars or so. You have to do a double now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is. I. I. Um. I just want to say this is an amazing exercise. Just to raise awareness, of, I'm vibrating here and here and here and here and here. And am I consciously deciding? Yes, this needs an extra ornament. This note, or is it just a habit? Yeah. Because I. I think nothing is worse than than then say, oh, I, I did this and that just because it's a habit. But if it's a choice, who am I to argue that it's that you can't do it? I mean, if, if it's your choice. But I, I saw that there were a couple of moments where like, ah, wow, there is another one. So you, you had to you had to trill again. Yeah. Um, the reason. And I don't mean to be dogmatic about this, but but the reason why I want you to question your use of vibrato is what I've said to Zoe in the in the lesson before, is that this is music that is based on harmony and not melodic music. And by putting all this vibrato, you turn it into a melody. Yeah? So yeah. just by, by the conception of it, it's you turn it into something else. And again, it sounds great. Yeah, don't get me wrong. It's, it sounds really cool. And I, I like this sort of tightness of the vibrato. It's, it's really good. I just wonder if you're not turning it into something that it's, that it's not and take away the attention from the harmonic progression a little bit too much. Yeah? And if you want to experiment once with, with what we did in the, in the um, lesson before with the two down bows. Um... Now I know, of course, this is under one note. So if that doesn't feel good, then maybe one can start in an, an upper there, yeah? But I, I do like the retake, actually. Yeah, and again, we have... Um... You want to give that a shot? Yes. Yeah, and it's it's kind of it's kind of hard to to judge the the real dynamics through Zoom. So maybe you are resolving the when you come back to the D minor, but it sounded here as if the um, is just as strong as 
Mm. Yeah, and this might also be a cellistical thing because we have we have three three notes and and it's good to come to that to that F. Let's be mindful that we resolve there again. Yeah, and one last thing, please don't be lazy on an. I do think this Sarabande could use a little bit of a French overture shortness of, of the 16th notes. Ram, pa, ba, yeah? Instead of yam, da, da. Becomes a little bit heavy footed in, in my, and let's, let's imagine that we're still moving, moving forward. Okay, now we are sort of resorting to, to this half. You yeah, need to do some air, tra air, air travel, yeah? Maybe you travel and then... Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but you just play the note, you travel and then you play. Yeah, because because um, each note um, has its own. It has da ba ba ba. At least that's how it sounds here. But these are just notes that go from one harmony to the next. Yeah. Please don't get stuck. Yeah. Give the dancers a chance to elegantly move forward rather than going step by step but this is actually a motion that that goes forward can we try one more time Carlo, thank you from the beginning yeah let's let's give it a shot <laughs> Sorry, I, f I feel like um, I have a um, on each note I have a little something going on, but you you take away the attention from from the harmonies. Yeah. And I wouldn't shy away from from playing open string and then to go on the um, then to go on the trill. This is something that I noticed. Um, a lot with you that that you play rather than playing an open string you go to fourth position and i i like the long strings just because you know when this was played on gut string the higher you went it, it sounded more like dead cat yeah so so in order to um uh, to keep the keep the strings long and, and ringing as possible yeah um for example, when you have um, which is totally weird to do that, yeah, but you have sorry, um I have the feeling that you have the full length of the string and it actually resonates much better. Well, we'll come to that. Um, Let's go from uh, bar three. Da, da, de, da, yum, da, 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 da. That's the danger now with this Boeing. We need to we need to be very virtuosic. Um, take out all the weight in, in the bow and really play this very softly. Uh, the, that we don't fall on our faces there. Yeah, 
Yeah. Again, you, you, you give the you give the tenor or no actually the alto voice. So we have bass, uh, um, bass baritone, and then here we have the alto. You give an extra five dollars to 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 shine. The the singers trio should be absolutely um, homogenous here. It's really like playing a D minor chord on, on the piano. I've, unfortunately, I'm such a bad pianist, I don't want to uh, pester you with, with me trying to find a D minor chord on a piano. Um, but it's it's really just a simple harmony. And it's not a harmony, a harmony plus melodic voice, in my opinion. Let's give it a shot. Wherever you want. Careful, just with the last note that um, that it's phrasing off. Yeah? So there's no new information to be gained. Yeah, we we just have a variation on F. Yeah? But it's not like we, we're getting new new information. It's 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 already been said. Yeah. Shall we go to the jig? Okay. Or do you want to still do um, work a little bit on the sarabande? Yeah, um, just try that fingering once for me. Um, indulge me. And tell me how that how that sounds over there. Yeah, you really need to. I think your your E flat needs to be a little bit flatter. So. Yeah, this is great because then also here you have the you have the ringing D string. Yeah, and, and I, uh, this to me sounds just a little, uh, how shall we say, a little moldy. I have to say, and this. Yeah ringing strings it's it's such a luxury and and bach uh with with all his knowledge of stringed instruments himself being a really fantastic violin player yeah um he counted on those ringing strings i'm absolutely sure yeah? you see that also how he set um the scordatura in the in the fifth suite how fantastic his knowledge was of of the ringing of the instrument yeah and 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 where to put open strings and and where to um well i mean you 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 know all this i i, I don't have to tell you but this is this is for me a, a great example that that he really counted on free ringing instruments let's go to to here and of course knowing knowing me now a little bit for now 25 minutes um <laughs> Would be my personal preference, I have to say. Uh, uh, we have these two wonderfully ringing strings. Like, why dampen them? Why dampen them? Yeah. And again, imagine what it sound what it would sound like with gut. Yeah. Uh, have you ever tried, by the way? No. No. Uh, try just just to to put A and D some gut. I, I tried it. I tried to play a full set of gut strings once in concert, and, and I 100% failed. So I mean, it, it it takes it takes time to to really learn it, and you know to to, to get the bow right. You rediscover your shoulder, because we with with the um, steel string like we do one motion and it sounds, and to get that sound on on a, on a gut string, you really have to move the whole arm. And and it's it's a great rediscovery of, of this part that we that we shamely neglect with the steel string. Sorry to interrupt. Let's hear. 
hear this one more time. Okay. What what is the harmonic progression just in that beginning? It's uh, flat. one five one. One five one, exactly, exactly. But then I, I wonder why um, when you come back to the one, you give me that oh. extra extra <laughs> kick. Yeah. Uh, the, here's the thing, cellistically, you are doing absolutely the right thing. Harmonically, not. Yeah, and that's why I said in the beginning. Um, Chillistically, I, I enjoy what you do and, and I enjoy the sounds that you get out of it. And I enjoy, um, yeah, also, also just the, the panache that it has. I mean, it's, it's, it's very good playing, but it neglects, um, it neglects the harmony a little bit too much for my taste. Yeah. Okay. Let's try one more time from the beginning. <laughs> instrument is that? Maybe like a trumpet? No, it's a bordone. And the, bord the bordone is a, is a very interesting instrument. Uh, you, you know it already or, or, or not yet? No. No, okay. So it's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting mechanism where you have horse hair over strings, but you have a wheel that you turn. And so there is an infinite um, infinite uh, contact to the strings and it's played with a claviatura so da 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 it's a very mechanical instrument yeah you get that in in most jigs yeah in the um was that yeah exactly uh, from from third suite um and this is something that is rather mechanical. It's nothing beautiful. It's really something that you find on the market and it's really noisy instrument. And it's the same thing here. Yeah. So please don't, don't beautify at the end, but he, he, he also lets you end on a nasty chord that that ninth yeah and if you put a then you you put a lot of um, vanilla powder sugar um, on on something that is actually really yeah sticking out yeah, yeah. just to, to tell you the origin of, of, of this kind of it's, it's really coming from folk style yeah well, by the way what is the the meaning of, of Jig do you know where it comes from I mean the meaning of the name now Okay, um, oh, oh, it's, it's from uh, Ireland, right? The guy. Well, I don't know if it's it's Ireland or I I it, somewhere in the UK. It's it's to jig is to jump, so it's a jumping dance. Ooh, okay. Yeah, and and to jig, so so, um, it got Frenchified by to uh, jig, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, so it, it fits all the um, other names. Um, Yes, so so jumping dance and and that's where these folk instruments come in. It's it's noisy. It's a marketplace, and damn, da -da -ding, da, you have you have these 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 instruments that actually keep one bass note, and then on top of that, you can improvise something. Yeah. Okay, so let's uh, let's go before that a little bit. What's what works for you? Uh, maybe from. <laughs> You are such an amazing virtue also that for you jumping to that C is is ab 
absolutely no problem at all. Just imagine that um, there is also your your combo in the back. So so you have you got the drummer taka tika taka tika taka, and you also got the bla bass player ding boom ba da ba da ba dum. In this case, the bass is on the um, backbeat. So whenever you have a changing bass, and whenever the bass changes in close succession, don't play too quickly because the bass needs to come after you. Yeah. Just also for me as a listener, uh, I'm I'm of course very intrigued by your virtuosity, but harmonically I cannot follow you because it's going so quickly. Just psychologically, I need more time to understand it. Yeah, as as a listener that doesn't know it. Let's start in the same spot. And you realized again, uh, first you did some beauty, but the second time you did it, I liked it. It was it was really good. Let's not let's not put too much sugar. Yeah, let's let's show the nasty chords because if if you if you don't show me um, how chords are uncomfortable, then I also don't feel the need for resolution. Okay, and as a listener, I need to long for that resolution that I'm like, <gasps> you know, and uh, actually Bach. Bach's uh, son, uh, Carl Philipp Emanuel, he was the first one to put crescendo diminuendo. Yeah, so he took that concept of tension and release even further than his father. And it is said that the first time when an audience heard piece by uh, Carl Philipp Emanuel, where he where he did crescendo diminuendo with a crescendo, the whole audience stood up, and with the diminuendo they sat down again. Yeah, that's how visceral this whole concept of of um uh, of of tension and release was yeah so if you if you don't give me good tension there's no need for me to to relax and then then i just have it as background but i want to be grabbed by by your playing okay so let's um uh, just where you started before was good <laughs> Um, one last thing. Um, dum bum bum bum. Dum da 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 dum dum. Yeah. Let's say that is our thesis. Or or, or uh, yeah. Let's say it's our thesis, and then comes a little explanation why that is like that. Dum da 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 da. Yeah. So. I want to have different characters there. I want. Uh, can you play the, the beginning of, of second half? Just let's let's play the thesis uh, uh, one more time. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And now, and now. So, um, what could be what could be a good thesis? Um, like in in words. Uh, you think of something. I think of something. Um. Yeah, tonight it's cold. That's why I'm gonna wear boots. However, they have to be of a certain kind, so it's not too hot, and they still have to have some sort of um, plasticity or something like that. Yeah. So you make a statement, and then you explain that statement. So don't put them on the same hierarchy level, but the explanation should be maybe a little bit more under. Yeah. Dum ba should be top, and then dum da 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 is an explanation that is under it. Yeah, but you play it with the same expression. You play it with the same expression. It's 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 all it's all working perfectly. Yeah, yeah. But can can I also feel through your body language that that you that you give me a strong statement? And then you 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 weasel a little bit through, yeah. Good. No, this is this is all going very well. This is all going very well. I want you to 
introduce um, speech a little bit more. Yeah, uh, when you read Harnon Kua, which is the author that I that I mentioned um, in the beginning, uh, all this music is is also speech related. Yeah, it's not melody related, but it's speech related, and it's related to to um, gestures, gesture relation. Yeah. Yeah, this is not, these are not individual notes, but these are gestures that go like this. Yeah? And so when, when you continue working this, um, think of physical gestures that go with it. Maybe even make a choreography. Why not? Lock the door and just, just come up with a dance. I mean, why not? Uh, one of, I have to tell you, one of the, and then we have to do the changeover to the next student, but uh, one of the most inspiring um afternoons i had was in our where, where i teach in in cologne in, in germany um we had uh, a choreographer come for uh historic dance for baroque dance and there was a shortage of guys so so i got subscribed so to speak and um it was amazing because suddenly we we saw these dances turn into physical motion and of course, you know, we, we think of, of them as sort of being abstract, uh, abstract and stylized dances. And that is all true. But to see what it's like to dance a Sarabande or to see what it's like to dance an Allemand, which was the most interesting to me because it's actually double tempo, um, was something very cool. So, I mean, I, I don't know if you have the, the chance to, um, to, to have historic dance in, in San Francisco, but go to youtube and and look for look for some look for a geek how how the choreography looks like yeah i don't know if you've done that already but i find it highly inspiring yeah and that just to really see well what does it mean to jig what is what is that jumping you know especially with with all their costumes and everything what they're wearing how high were they actually is it a pogo dance or is it is it just like a little little jolt i don't know you know but but you'll find out very soon yeah. Carlo, all the best to you and um, many greetings to Mexico City. Yeah. And uh, so hope to see you next time. Bye bye.
great stuff. Congratulations. Really, really good. Nice to see you, Bowen. How are you? Good, good. Good, yeah, fantastic. So you are also in the Bay Area, I, I heard? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I... Good. Can you hear me okay? Is that, yeah, is yeah. that balance? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, right now I can hear you clearly. Oh, okay, excellent, excellent. Okay, so first of all, congratulations. I, I, I got the music beforehand and uh, I mean, this, all this stuff puts every popper issue to shame. So uh, congratulations for, for playing this in such an excellent way. Um, before we dive into the music, I just want to address something at the bow that I see. Yeah. And that is that you curl the fingers quite a, these two you curl around quite a lot and that stiffens the other fingers so i i find the bow hold oh rather rather stiff i I've, I've not really seen you do a lot of uh this stuff and maybe that also could lead to a little bit more to a sound that goes a little bit more into the string yeah. rather than on top of the string you know what i mean yes yeah um could also be that that maybe you just for fun um can work a little bit uh, leave these fingers off and then work a little bit on the flexibility of these two you want you want to try that once just take the the bow in, in the uh, hey. the, uh yeah. yeah exactly yeah. just sort of move that back no no just just take it in the hand <laughs> off, off the sorry off the string you could just you could just do like this exactly yeah yeah i see everything move except for the fingers i'd love for you just to sort of move the fingers down you see so now my fingers are up oh yeah and now they move down like this huh? no no i see your 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 wrist doing beautiful things the wrist is great yeah it's really about getting the flexibility of the fingers yeah Oh. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I see almost none of that when, when you play. I, I, I feel like yeah. these are these are quite stretched. I don't know if this is a unknown feeling to the fingers right now. I, I would, maybe it feels like it's just too stressful. Too stressful. <laughs> I mean the in the recording. Ah, okay. Yeah, it is, it is stressful to record. That is that is true, absolutely. But let's um, let's use this as as a mo as a moment of actually relaxation. If you, you know, it's funny. I I I also am a lot in stressful situations in in concerts or recordings or YouTube videos or whatever, and it's it's stressful for sure. But if I find one part of my body that is allowed relaxation, like here then that translates into everything. It's really cool. It's really great. So allow this to be part of your relaxation. Also, I'm not so sure if you're, let's see how, how we do this. When you curl the the fingers around like this, how how much of the pronation is actually happening? I wonder about that. Yeah. Mm. Can you put the camera a little bit down so I, so I see what you're doing on the stream? Yes, excellent. Yeah, perfect. No, no, that's already really great bone. That's awesome. Um, no, just just maybe a chord and see how how these fingers can give in a little bit more. Yeah. And you see. It's like a suspension on a on a car when you um, th the suspension does not move actively. So you don't necessarily need to prepare the bow change like that. But you come to the change and then for me, this part moves first and it just pulls the fingers after it. So, you know, although although this is a very active practice when when we when we do this or when we do the spider or whatever. Yeah, when we do all of this nice stuff, but in the end, this is actually a passive motion. And um, just because my camera is fixed, I, I maybe need to stand up to show you. Um, but... Uh, 
Yeah, you see how, especially these two fingers, they are responsible to move. Because if 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 they are stiff, then everything else is stiff. You 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 can't you can't move it. It's it's just a force. Of, it's just a law of physics. Yeah. Yeah. We, we we can't fix this so easily over the internet but um and i'm i'm not intending to i i just wanted to point that out that that was something that that i realized maybe could use a little bit of attention at least yeah yeah um because everything everything you do musically is is so impressive i want to uh, go into the second movement with you first yeah um <sighs> You know the the problem with with solo repertoire is that we have to create everything. Yeah. We have to create the rhythmical structure. We have to create the the dramatic curve. Mm. There is no pianist and no orchestra to help us with that, but we have to do everything ourselves. And already in the first bar, you need to educate me as a listener that these pizzicatos are not on the beat, but they're off beat. Oh, yes. Bah, bah. Yeah, so this is actually, these are two upward motions rather than ram, ram. Because when, if I would only listen to you, I would think it is, it is on the downbeats. Yeah. yeah? I, I have no chance of, of, uh, of discovering that. So mm. how do we play off beat pizzicatos? What do you suggest? I would say there was a gesture, like yeah. The way you give this the gesture is down, yeah, down. How about yeah. ba, ba? Uh -huh. How about down? Oh yes. Yeah, I still see down instead of oh. one, two, three. Huh? Yeah, and um, of course the ar arpeggiato, but uh, it's more in, in your inner feeling that, that hopefully transmits to us that it's one, two, sorry, one, one, two. It's like you are creating an expectation because and, and the problem that I had before when you were playing it, it sounded to me like, thank you very much and we can all go home. <laughs> yeah? So like, uh, finished. But actually, you are opening the curtain, because none of us yet knows that this is actually the dominante to G minor. Yeah? Yes. Because it could also be the dominant, but it's not. So you need to play that pizzicato with the expectation to give to give me the expectation as the uneducated listener. Yeah. Bum bum. Yeah. So there needs to be a, a connection between the D major and your beginning of the arco, which is G minor. Yes. Uh huh? Yes. Wanna give that a shot? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. You see, I uh, good, good, much better, much better. Um I am not sure if all the in-between motion that you need to go from pizzicato to arco. Dum drum. It's not a little distracting for me to feel the tempo. Bum, <laughs> bum, bye, yum. Yeah, keep yeah. that tension. That that dominant tension should not be lost by all that stuff. And you're so good. For you, it's no problem. Yeah, <laughs> you just need to be aware that this pause is very much part of the composition. This pause or this this rest, as you would call it, this rest, is very much part of the music. If anything, it is the music. Yes. The rest is the music. Mm -hmm. 
here now we have a much shorter rest yeah yeah, yeah. Bum, 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 bum. yeah so um that's also something that i wanted to say in the first movement is sometimes because there is no piano because there is no orchestra because there is no percussion there is no outer structure in solo pieces i feel often we take too much freedom yeah, yeah. do you know where the the, the word freedom, the word rubato. Do you know where that comes from? It's it's an Italian verb, rubare. Do you know what it means? Uh, like the uh, a little bit more or less or longer or short. I I'm not sure. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, that that's that's fine. Um, rubato comes from the Italian rubare, which means stealing. Yeah. So when you play rubato, you steal time here and there. But because we are honest people, we give it back. Yeah. So whenever you take a little bit of time, you have to give it back. Okay. If you, if you, um, if you decide to to put a little bit more time, then you have to take it back again. Okay. So, mm -hmm. as pedantic as that may sound, I like uh, whether it's Kodai or whether it's Hindemith or actually for Bach, I like to practice it very straight, almost dry. And then I decide where I take time rather than starting off playing very, very free. Okay. Yeah. Um, that is at least uh, just to tell you my approach. Yeah. Because otherwise, for me as a listener, I have nothing to hold on to. Rega is another good example. If Rega is, is completely without any bones, shall we say, bones is, is, is the important word. Yeah. If Rega is without bones, then it's just like harm harmonic mess and this goes in a little bit in that direction yeah. okay cool um where do you want to start from uh maybe it's beginning why not sounds good are the things that we could hold on to as a listener the, rhythm is hard at the moment another one would be uh, the, the musical line musical line for sure the, harmony I think is also really important yes yeah so what is the harmony that that where we are in and when we come to the tempo uh. A tempo, you mean the, the, I, I, I don't have any, <laughs> you mean, you don't have any markings, I don't think this, this bar, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, the a tempo in, uh, yeah, and what harmony is that? Uh, uh, my, my third. My third. This is okay. a B flat minor. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we start with a C minor, mm -hmm. and it would be really great if you give me, uh, as a listener, the experience. Ah, now we modulated from the C minor to, to, to the to the B minor and uh, B flat minor and we did that in the following harmonies that knowledge you need to have because otherwise it's just a whole line of of um, of question marks to yeah. tell you the truth because I mean I'm, I, I never played this piece so you have the luxury of having someone with fresh ears and I 
I just don't understand what you're doing in between C minor and B flat minor. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe you can explain to me a little bit um, in these one, two, three, four bars, what is happening and what your strategy is there. Uh, I, I think it's the, the, it's more like the expansion of the bar one. Or the, the uh, I'm not sure. It, it's like a, a simple melody and the, added to an, a lot of notes within, within the melody. Yes, I think that is a very good point. So you have you have um, a simple simple melody with Shankarian analysis. You will you will f find that melody very easily. Yeah. And then he puts notes that don't necessarily belong into the into the harmony. Yeah. And those you need to show me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I give you I give you an e example uh, completely different sound world. Yeah, it's just Schumann going from E flat to F, but actually he adds this note and then he adds the another G as an appoggiatura. Okay, so in order to show me as a listener and show your audience um, what to listen for and what are the extravagant notes that shouldn't belong, so to speak. You need to identify them and you need to show them. So let's look at the first bar. Um, we are in C minor, so uh, what note does not belong in C minor? The, uh, the B. The, the B B natural, exactly. Perfect. So go through the other notes rather um, rather fluid and then show me that one note that doesn't belong. That's the, that's the stone in the shoe. Okay. Yeah. Also the also the D flat does not belong. Yeah, so that chromaticism is is something that is a little bit uh, uncomfortable. Um, by the way, again, I'm speaking from the point of view of the uneducated cellist that has is listening to this for the first time. It is lento sostenuto, but it's in four. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. So no matter what tempo you choose, make sure that I get the feeling we are in four and not in eight. Yes. That that there is some sort of beat. Maybe I'm far too fast now. Very possible. But it's possible in every tempo to give me that four feeling. That calando, that um, ya bom ba. It's nice that you that you end this so beautifully, but I want to feel that the the natural is yeah. actually waiting for resolution. So it's it has a lot of tension, but it's also in the diminuendo. So it's it's this kind of tension. Oh, and then. Ah, I can go in the in the in the B flat uh, B flat minor, yeah. Um, why don't you do that calando bar? So that is one bar before the attempt. Uh, yeah, and for the you know. 
know, we've we've been so soft this whole time. And then for the first time he, he puts the crescendo di Munuendo and then um, this is a chance for us to to keep the listener interested that actually um, we the vain tenor has has entered the stage. Yeah? yeah. Before it was more the musicologist in the basement. Yeah. Give me something for my soul here. Yeah. Um, let's go again from the This is really good. I I like that C uh, up there. This is very good. When it comes to the arpeggios now, of course, they are highly complicated, and I'm glad you're giving me a little bit of time to understand them. However, if you play di da dum di da dum da, we are again in eight. Yeah. yeah. So so in order to to keep us in four. There needs to be some sort of sense that that these are six instead of just three, three, three. It's a little bit confusing because he writes three, 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 three. But we are in a time signature of four. There's this this is undoubtedly, yeah? Yes. Can you try once to just with the danger of, of losing a couple of notes, just to give me the musical idea of, of staying in four and then we'll we'll have to do the changeover. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Now I have a flow. It's it's so good. But it, it's it's really difficult, of course. Yeah. Do it one more time. It was so good. Let's go from the top C. Yeah, because now when you play like this, Bowen, the ritenuto actually makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because before you were so uh, in so such small detail that there was no need for another ritenuto. It was all ritenuto in a way. Yeah. Yes. So dramatically speaking, we've we've compressed the whole thing a little bit more, and therefore I, as a listener, I'm I'm more going from A to B to C with you, rather than getting lost in all those details. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I think it's I think it's important to remember that that you know obviously was the the most fantastic violinist of 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 his time. Yeah. Um, that all of these things also have an improvisatory character to them. Yeah, yeah. it's like in the morning, da, 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 I'm just gonna come up with some stuff. Yes, and I think that's also how some of this. I'm, I'm not saying the majority of it, even if it's just small details, yeah. but I think some of it is in that idea of let's see how crazy I can modulate from one harmony to the next, but in an improvised way. Yeah. yeah? And what you did now with those six tablets was great. That was really good. Yeah. Maybe we can think more along those lines. Uh, bon, I'm so sorry. We have to go to the next one. Okay. But it was uh, it was a pleasure to hear you, and it was also a pleasure for me to get to know this music a little bit better with you. So thank you very much for that. Yeah. yeah? See you next time. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.
Chloe, can you hear me now? Can you hear it? Is it okay? Yes. Can you Good. hear me? Yes, yes, it's perfectly. Well, congratulations. That is a fantastic. Um, one of my Corona projects is actually to to relearn Bach six. So, so this is very inspiring. <laughs> Got the music here, so ready to go. Um, listen. There, there is, there is very few things to say, and I, I, I pull my hat to everybody who who plays uh, Bach six like uh, you do. So I'm, I'm, uh, um, I don't want to artificially look for problems where there are none. Um, I, I think, if anything, you could now rejoice in the fact that you play it so well, and uh, make it look a little bit less like work and um, give me the the feeling as a listener that this is actually the most joyous piece of music, which in fact it is. I, I think we, we can argue that, that once we take away all the technical challenge, uh, it's it doesn't get more joyous than that. Yeah. Um, so I'd, I'd love to encourage you just to no, also not to focus so much on 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 watching what you're doing um i don't know if you know that phenomenon when you get on an elevator and there's five people and and suddenly one person is looking up everybody else is following that that gaze yeah so the same thing goes for an audience by the way if if you concentrate with your gaze on something everybody's like is that is that difficult? Is, is there something going on? And we should not give that away. I mean, that is that is an inside business secret between all of us. That it's it doesn't play itself, shall we say? Yeah. So um, and I and I still must say, uh, for me, the, the the it's a mystery how how Yo Yo Ma in his career probably once looked at his fingerboard and and never never otherwise. It's, it's just like. Stephen is also like that. is completely disconnected with, with with visually what was going on here. Yeah. I admire that, and I don't know. I don't know if that can also inspire you in a way. Yeah. Um, okay. So shall we? Shall we just go from the top? Is that all right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just with with the with the, and now because we're in the safe space of of just you and me and a million other people. Um, so you can you can feel free to make some mistakes, but but give me a little bit more of an of an upward approach rather than this is work. Yeah. <laughs> 
It's, it's good that you interrupted. Listen, I, I feel because we're doing so much Bach, I, I completely feel like a one trick pony uh, because I, I always come back to the harmony. Um, and uh, I, I apologize to all our viewers um, that I, I'm giving such a boring class today, but but this is what I'm passionate about. So I, I can't help myself. Um, already in, in the first bar, uh, you know, we, we're going from it's. We have a one five one, right? Dum dum, bom bom, right? Yeah. Dum da, ya dum dum de dum. Yeah, and it always because cellistically, with that chord, it's it's the strongest of the bunch. Yeah, um, for fun play this once a fifth lower as it's intended. So as, as if you would have a five string. Yeah, exactly. So that, that is what it would be like if there was another string. Yeah, which would be great. <laughs> have you ever tried on, on a five string? No. It's it's fascinating. Uh, just I would say it, it's 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 easier at first, but then you realize the music is just as complex, and 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 you still need to to deal with that. And suddenly, when you have another string, you just don't know where to orientate yourself because we've we've spent our life on four strings, and suddenly there's another one, and you're like ah, totally disoriented. But this is a great method to to just take the difficulty out and just understand the simplicity also of those open strings. Yeah, this, there is nothing spectacular, and then should also not not get a. Actually, um, I I use open strings. Which. I, I don't recommend. I mean, it's it's just something that I that I love. I love I love those open strings. But don't don't take that advice from me. Yeah, I just wanted to mention it. Yeah, do take it, but uh, don't take it. That's the thing. Like, I I I have a hesitation recommending these things because um, ninety nine percent of other people are going to tell you, "Oh, that's complete bullshit. Why are you doing it?" Um, but there are certain things in these suites that that. Uh, like everybody, I mean, I, I I just have a particular favor for, and one of them is the open strings, um, just because of Bach's understanding of resonance and his his, I mean, when you think um, open string, open string, quinta, yeah, he he composes music that is meant to have a resonance and ha have to make that thing resonate by itself. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm, I find that interesting. Okay, let's go back to what you did, and now just let's take that information of dum dum ya dum 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 a little bit of a resolution. I don't know. I don't know if you were online before when I was talking about the Bordone. The Bordone. I was talking about that that in, a special instrument that that. Um, um, which has one string that is always being played, and then it has other other notes that are played with, and it's the same thing here. Again, it's the jig, so it's it's the the folkiest of um, of the dances. Um, so you you are, in my opinion, 
oh. almost applying too much culture. Dum, da, 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 da. It's it's really it's one of those instruments. Also harmonically, not much is happening. And then then we go on with something something else, yeah. Um, sophistication for the first four bars, and then folk style for the next four bars. Let's try that. It's a little hard to hear over Zoom, but um, it sounds to me that it's soft and then um, actually that is the loudest. Yeah. Please don't disregard the harmony. Chillistically, again, you're doing exactly the right thing. Just goes out and, and it's, it's a lot of fun to play that chord, to bounce it up. But harmonically, it's a resolution, yeah. I think. Am I wrong? Maybe I am. Tell me. No, you're, you're right. <laughs> I think in this case, I might be. Um, yeah, so either if you want to keep, if you want to keep that sort of panache and schwung, then needs to be even stronger. Just so that, that we, we, we create a tension that is worth a release. That's that's all I'm asking for, yeah? So and now dum da dum dum da dum dum da now was was a little bit more more straight. Now let's split the difference. Okay? Let's let's keep the let, let's keep the um the deftness of it, yeah? But um let's still phrase a little bit. Okay? So let's let's split the difference in these two. But but it's Bordone. Look at uh, look it up on, on YouTube. Uh, there are actually some <coughs> Um, I don't think there are many originals, but there are some replicas and they sound really nasty. I mean, they, they really need to sound louder than the market and everybody yelling like, oh, tomatoes 250, uh, I don't know, apples 390. What? No, it's impossible. And da, 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 you have above that. Okay. So it's, it's not, it's not the most sophisticated instrument. That's all I'm saying. Look at that. Okay. Let's hear it one more time. the music in front of you um when when if you have the music in front of you um when did we start um the e7 um, i don't know my, my music is in is in alto clef so i don't really look at it. ah okay <laughs> okay you know, um, what, what I'm trying to say is that when you play, we're already in, yeah? So this is not new information, yeah? But this has been around for, for let's say, this has been around for one and a half bars. Yeah. Da dum bum ba. So so this whole section because it's it's looking for the resolution. Dum ba dum 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 da. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the whole thing needs to be a little bit more supported, I would think. So because. 
all of this bar most important. Yeah, already starting. That is already in the harmony. I just want to bring the, the attention to you that... Uh, it, sorry, I just want to bring to your attention that we are already in um, in the harmony that needs to be resolved. Okay. Yeah? Because we have... No? Yes. Alto clef. Yeah, it's the... Actually, it's the manuscript. He wrote it in alto clef, and that my my score, the Petrus score, is is like the manuscript. So everything is in alto clef. As if life wasn't hard enough, eh? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> um, from here. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Uh, two bars before that. A fourth finger, huh? Yes. Wow, chapeau, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, really. Uh, I, 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 I mean, it's it's good when it works. Huh? What? It's not really yeah. hard. What do you do? Da 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 da. I think I I I do. Uh... How how I continue? I have to look up because I'm I'm not at home, so I don't have my music. And again, six is something that that I've never done as much as the others, and this is a good opportunity for me. Um, the but but I I do remember that that um, I don't use four, but 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 I I securely do this, and then I have to then I have to do a shift. Yeah? Yes, yes. But but the thumb the thumb stays as as my fundament. Yes. Uh, so 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 that for sure. Um, no, I just uh, wanted to say very well. Let's continue. Dum dum da dum 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 da dum. Yeah. Again, this this would have been two open strings, right? Yes. Yeah. So, can you give us the illusion with the amount of bow how, that you would use on open strings? Uh, what do you have a thumb or, or what? Do, what do you use? Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, um, I personally do not like so much. Show, show me the, show me the harmony. Really, really pure. Yeah, um, it, you turn, you turn it into a little bit of an opera there. Configuration in sixteenth notes. If they could be a little bit more inegal, I feel 
too much. Um, I, I come into this sense of of sort of a perfect um, row of 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 these sixteenths. Yeah, and when you when you go back to Harnoncourt, um, he he mentions that that his theory is that that sort of sixteenth notes that resembled their neighbor, so to speak happened in 1789 which of course was the revolution exactly french revolution so there was there was fraternité but then there was also égalité and the égalité um of course only for a handful of people but the égalité uh was um also brought to then through the invention of the conservatories uh, meant that the 16th note that you would learn in Paris was the same 16th note that you would play in Lyon in Strasbourg and subsequently then in, in Cologne and, and going up on, until uh, to the east. Yeah, So um, this, was, this is very untypical for this time to play these 16th notes in such a sameness, if you know what I mean. Yeah, Because, yeah. because they lose their speech. If you play them too exact, then then they lose their natural flow of of conversation, and it sounds a little bit like my Apple Mac computer is speaking. Yeah. Hello, Johannes. How are you this morning? Would you like to know the weather? Thank you very. Of course, you don't play like that. Yeah. Please don't understand me wrong. Yeah, you play great. But could could give you the freedom of of maybe also with being a little bit more creative with the bowing because. Um, not all of them are connected. Yeah, some of them are also detaché. So that could give you a, a, um, a possibility of, of playing a little bit more in a free way, I would say. Yeah. That just as an inspiration for future practice or not. You can also throw it out. Okay. Um, dum -dum, da -da 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 -dum -bum. I'm singing in wrong tonality. Sorry. Um. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Chloe, I have a question. Your D is is getting a lot of vibrato, and then you play the open strings. Would how, how would it sound? Pom po, will it pure? And instead of vibrato, you allow the notes. <laughs> I don't want to bam, bam into the microphone. You give it a shape. Yeah. That's that's the composition basically. Yeah. Pa. Upwards. Yeah. And here's the thing. When I say less vibrato, I don't want you to have the feeling that I'm taking something away from you. Quite the contrary. I want you to replace it with something else. So the emotion that goes into here, you take it and it goes into the right hand. Yeah, so maybe even if you need vibration, I do it once like this. Okay, what, whatever you do with the bow, I want you to get a little bit more creative with your bow stroke on the long notes, yeah? Because otherwise it's like, oh, someone has taken away the beauty in my sound. No, we're just replacing it with another beauty, yeah? And that is found in, in the right time in, a, in abundance, but we're just lazy nowadays, yeah? Because we're, everything is done with the right hand. Uh, with the left hand, I'm sorry. Yeah, and let's just transfer some of the emotion into this hand. Thank <laughs> you. 
Good. Wonderful. So, on top of all your great playing, thinking of how all these chains of notes can have a little bit more of a creative flow. Yeah? Not not too much egalité, but actually speech. Yeah? Thinking how you can transfer the emotion that we have, because this is very emotional music. I mean, my, my heart races when I hear this, yeah? How we can replace the instinct of doing this into something that we do here. Huh? And otherwise, just enjoying how good you play. And uh, don't, uh, and, and, I, and I mean this in all seriousness, um, don't hesitate to show me how much you enjoy your good playing. Huh? This, when I when I saw the video, I was like, "Well, this this looks like work, but it it sounds really good." So don't tell me that. Don't tell me that it's that it's work. Yeah, this is this is just between you and me and a million other cellists. Yeah, <laughs> nobody else needs to know. <laughs> All right, Chloe, thank you very much, thank and you very thank you. And I think if if we have any questions, we could open uh, the forum for that now. Thank you, bye. Thank you, bye bye. Thank you so much, Johannes, you, for, for, for the masterclass. So, Thank you. Yeah, uh, so, uh, so many great uh, ideas. And, and th also, thank you so much for caring and, and being so passionate about the teaching. It's just like you're giving your time like that. It's, <laughs> it's wonderful. Uh, we, we have a few questions uh, from the audience. Um, and, and actually, before I, uh, how much time do you have left for us? I mean, we, we could do as many as you want. I mean, I, okay. if, if, if in, in 20 minutes I can, I can start having dinner, then it's, it's going to be <laughs> half past nine. Uh, that yes. would be great. But okay. you know, uh, if, if there's, if there's a lot of questions, we have time. This is no, no okay. hurry. Yeah. Uh, so the, the first question was. What is it like to be an artist who travels a lot during a time of quarantine? Well, it means that I'm not traveling. <laughs> Simple <laughs> as that. It actually, um, I, I consider myself very lucky that I live a sort of a, I have two hats in my life that I, that I have the teaching in Cologne at the Hochschule and that I that I do this because I now I at least I don't have to worry how the food comes on the table. What what worries me really is is how we're gonna um, get out of this as cultural institutions and how how you know some of the orchestras that now were sent home, especially in the United States, with one month of pay and one month of healthcare, uh, which I think is crazy. Um, how uh, how we are going to reclaim that? Um, because we all know that if you if you cancel something, it's very hard to rebuild that. So we, we need to be very much aware that the orchestras have been building their seasons over decades. And I just hope that that we can sort of re reclaim that. Also, of course, for the generation that is now just ready to start, right? I mean, like the wonderful cellist that we had heard today, that, um, you know, that, that there is still going to be enough institutions that hire people and, and that, that there is a, a workplace for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I I will say from a personal standpoint of view, I am enjoying this time very much because it's a time of learning for me and it's a time of of really going back to the basics and also uh, reopening chapters that I that there is just no time when you travel as much as I do. I mean, I've, I've 250 travel days. You don't necessarily sit down and think about how the minor third is put in intonation. This is, this is, and now is the time to do it and so so i appreciate that on, at the same time i see very close friends of mine suffering uh financial losses of of, of huge uh existential um magnitude and and that of course troubles me personally very much so so i'm torn between the the, the two the personal enjoyment but also of course my my empathy for my friends wonderful yeah um I agree so much with with all of it. I actually do feel exactly the same. Uh, all right. Well, I, uh, all right. That's that's 
another question. Uh, what audio, video and streaming tools do you use? Not just for this class, but for other online lessons and classes you've done. Mm -hmm. So I'm using, um, I have this thing called uh, CamLink, which enables me to put my um, DSLR camera um, and take, take the HDMI out and turn it into a webcam. So that's why this, this picture is, is quite crispy. I have the H4 and Pro here, um, which is pretty good, pretty decent for sound and which also you can turn uh, into a um, sound card. So, so you, you don't have to put the audio through a, through a different sound card, but actually it, it turns into a sound card itself. So that's, that's really cool. Um, and yeah, the, the cam link I talked about, um, I, I do think one can get pretty decent results with, with this as well, or, or just with a, with a laptop. Um, it's more about understanding light than about the, the equipment itself to, to get a plasticity in the picture. But of course, to have to have a good camera helps, um, and also to have a good lens that that is open enough for for a, sort of a darker environment like this. So this is a 1.850 millimeter. If that says anything to your audience, so <laughs> and of course 1.8 goes out um, pretty pretty decently. Um, I also have a zoom which would have allowed to show more of the cello but it only goes to 4.0 and, and that would have been far too dark for this now. So yeah, <laughs> geek talk. I can't hear you now. Have you ever experimented with uh, um, another device, a second device that, that would show a different angle while, while you're demonstrating things like, the, I don't know, an iPad on the side or, or a phone or I've experimented with that. Um, I feel like because I I do get so involved with the music, I feel like that almost would distract me a little bit too much. Um, just from from a from a flow perspective in in the lesson, uh, but that is just a personal choice. And and I I'm people that that have a setup that where they can just sort of push a button and then it goes to a different perspective. I think is great because now let's say I, I teach from my laptop. Um, at least I can move the camera that way, yeah. But I then I, I have distance, and then I need to go to the laptop and, and do it. And it's 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 not ideal. I mean, we're we're still working out the kinks, I guess. <laughs> but uh, but it's it's cool. I've seen setups where they have like two cameras and 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 in like from the side and also one from the front. Really cool stuff is going on. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, here's a student question. Uh, uh, how does how does how do you keep yourself motivated these days? Mm -hmm. um, so, in the first week, I was completely unmotivated. I was like as if someone had pulled a plug out of the wall, and I was just like, you know, totally paralyzed. Um, because for the past twenty years, I've been just finishing a concert and already thinking about the next one and the one after next. And the, so it, it, there was so much planning involved. And suddenly when, when you have such a long break, uh, that goes away, the motivation for me, and this is going to sound very, um, very simple minded and stupid, but my motivation to practice is because I actually love music and because I love the contact with the instrument. And it's good that I have this time now to realize that I, physically want to spend time with my cello um, without any pressure from the outside. And I'm glad I, I made that realization because otherwise maybe it would have been time to start up carpentry or, or go into a law firm or something like that, you know, <laughs> because if, um, if when you are so in the, in the rat race of things, it's, it's very easy to forget your motivation. And I think this, time is going to be also very uncomfortable for a lot of people because they realize, hey, when there is no one screaming at me, you have to finish something or no one screaming uh, uh, next concert is, is, is in a week, you have to practice. But when that falls away, what is my motivation towards the, the instrument? And I think I think that is a very fair question and, and something that one should really um, uh, put in front. And it's a very uncomfortable question. And, and one should also hear the the honest answer to that, 
because that's that's um, a lot of you know we we grow up with our instruments as kids and we don't ask questions and and mama says go practice and papa says uh, i'll practice with you and you know it's it sort of just goes and then a lot of people at, at the age um 19 20 21 suddenly they wake up in a jolt and they're like what have i been doing for the last 15 years with my life and is this something that i want or am i just fulfilling something for other people and so i think this this crisis is, is going to um pose that question for for a lot of people and and um i i encourage everybody to be brave to 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 face it yeah. oh, great wonderful answer <laughs> um do we have time for maybe a couple more of course of course yeah. of course yeah yeah um uh let me see i, I hope i'm not skipping um uh yes uh, can Mr. Moser discuss bow changes at the end of the bow, particularly particularly at, at, the, at the heel? I want more seamless bow changes that are less liable to interrupt a musical line. Mm. Yeah, that's a that's a big subject, and it's and it's a big um, uh, big question mark for me also because because I'm struggling with that as well. So so I, whoever asked that question, I I feel for you. Um, I personally used to. Um, come to the tip and then do a lot of action to push the fingers forward and at the same time move the wrist backwards sort of send the fingers forward and then the wrist in the other way and i realized that in concert there is not always the best chance for for success and heinrich schiff with with whom i i, I took a lesson once he, he actually said at the tip i almost do nothing i just change really quickly and then i um i looked at some of the Navarra videos, how he talks about the bow change, and and he is actually not doing a lot. He says the fingers are actually more of a of a passive suspension, as I, I mentioned that in, in I think in in, in Bowen's class, um, and so I think we need to actively train that. So 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 sending the fingers forward and sending the wrist backward at the same time, but when it comes to performance and when it, when it comes to the actual music making this preparation exercise will allow us to do this as a passive motion and at least that is my my philosophy on it but but i've i've seen videos on the internet where people explain well this is a, should be a curved eight and 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 uh, and then you know put, put two grams less on this finger and and the the level of sophistication uh, that is out there far exceeds my expertise so I'm, I'm very sorry that I have to give a very rudimentary answer, but I think to prepare the suspension and then let it move passively is what I would suggest. Yeah. Yes. Wonderful. Um, okay. Uh, oh, wow. Okay, outside of actually playing and practicing the cello, what type of work do you do to further understand the music you're working on? Is there anything outside of the music that helps? Uh, life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, there was a time when I would read and go to museums and go to theater um, in order to understand music better and i understand that that is the wrong way i think uh, at least for me i think you need to read as much as you can you need to go to as many plays as you can and you need to listen to as much music as you can of different genres and trust that your soul and your understanding will turn your the complexity of the brain into something that is understanding more without you making a master plan Let's say I'm uh, uh, I'm playing uh, Debussy, so I have to I have to uh, go to the National Gallery and and now wa only watch Corbet uh, and 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 only watch you know and and only um, uh, go to plays that were written by impressionistic um, and expressionistic uh, authors. I think doing that kills the joy of inspiration and. Someone once once put it very uh, uh, very clearly, like um, when we talk about um, what is creativity, it is actually two elements of different nature that create 
that creates something third. And so if I, if I have a lot of those elements floating around in my, in my consciousness, um, something will come together. But it's actually better for these elements not to be of the same kind. Yeah, so let's say like I, I only li read literature when I play Shostakovich, I only read, uh, I don't know, Dostoevsky and, and, and just, just to sort of get into that world. But I take all different kinds of, of things and trust that the soul and the inspiration will create something um, that is also unexpected. I don't think that we can, um, that we can create inspiration necessarily in a very linear way. I think inspiration also likes to take detours. Yeah. Um, and I, this, this is the killer of inspiration. And that's why I, I restrict myself to, to as little as possible and try to, to come to, to reading. And, and now a theater is, is closed, but I just moved to Vienna for, for the reason, because they have such good theater. Uh, they, they got the book theater and they got the academy theater and these are these are theaters that I, that I absolutely love and it's an art form that that i love but i don't necessarily am an expert in and i think that is also very important that we don't just consume art in in the field where we are experts like if we only listen to to classical cello music we really limit ourselves to 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 uh, the smallest denominator so let's branch out i think that is that is what I would like to say. Yeah. And, and uh, exercise. I think exercise is, is the key. Yeah, exercise. Cello playing is not healthy. I mean, it's, it's sitting and it's sitting with a light turn. And uh, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to mobilize myself as much as possible, but running, swimming, whatever we can do. It's yoga, you know, it's great stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I again, um, you're preaching to the choir here. Yay. Good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, 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 okay, we... Um, Shall we take one more? Yeah, there is one more. Uh, how, how did you prepare for the Tchaikovsky competition? How long was your process? A uh, lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it's... And I'm only half joking because some of the pieces that that I played there, I mean, I, I played throughout my whole studies. I think, uh, I think I had twelve pieces on my program, and to think that I would learn all those twelve pieces in in the half year leading up to the competition would be utopic. So you have to build a lot of repertoire early on, and if you if if going to the Tchaikovsky is a goal of yours, or or to Geneva, or or to to any of the great competitions. Um, then plan long term and, and plan four years ahead and say, well, I, I will need these key pieces. I will need uh, Beethoven three and I will need Boccherini uh, six and I will need Schumann concerto and, and you know, the, and the Piatti Caprice. And I, 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 I practice these over time. Um, now, when it came closer to the competition, I made myself um, a master plan when to practice which pieces. But I tried um, to go in intervals of two days so that within two days I would touch all 12 pieces in some sense. Um, and I, because I had prepared these pieces over the years um, to a level where I could brush them off within about two weeks, it was fine for me to, to have those two day intervals. So, so I would, um, yeah, I would cover all, all 12 pieces in those two days. And even if it was just playing through a piece slowly, at least in my mind, I felt like I had touched this and, and I, I had it in the fingers quite literally. Yeah. Um, and then I, uh, about uh, two months before I, I scheduled a lot of recitals. So, um, I played the pieces live in the program but also in a succession in a way that they would come in the rounds so the, the 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 let's say the second round was a sonata round so that came pretty frequently and i i tried to to recreate what um what uh, uh, it would be like um when i was on stage there and when i would go from brahms f to bach 4 and then to um elfentanz um to to really feel what that what that journey also feels like in 
in that hour. Yeah, and so not just to play the individual pieces, but to play the individual rounds. I think that was that was also a key because um, once you finish that that uh, Brahms F, and then suddenly you have to go to E flat uh, major, you're like, you know, where is that intonation again? And to do that a couple of times, and then still have enough strength for the for the spiccato, it, <laughs> it's it's something that you have to you do a couple of times. So, so I think preparing for the competition is, is actually doing a lot. I wish I had had more mental preparation. So I wish what I did later on when I, when I prepared for my debut with a brilliant Philharmonic, uh, I felt very, very anxious and, and I felt like I couldn't do it. So I went to a mental trainer who works with tennis players usually and with with Olymp olympic uh, people and she really prepared me mentally to get through those concerts in a positive way and i wish i had that um all 10 years earlier for the tchaikovsky because it would have meant that i i don't know if i would have played better but i would have enjoyed the process more and when you do such a competition it's it's something that stays with you for a lifetime like you, somebody who does a competition, they, they know exactly what you did in what round and what mistake you did. And, and, and just for my mental hygiene, I think it would have been nice to not just to go and, and be thrown into that pool of sharks, but to have a little bit more mental preparation. And, and yeah, I, I think that I would do that differently. I think if, if I, if I may do that as a closing remark, as, as, um, as musicians, we are often under the impression that we have to do everything by ourselves and we, we have to practice by ourselves and we have to, um, you know, tackle all our problems by ourselves and tackle our health problems by ourselves and reach out, reach out. If you feel you need help, if you feel that you are, have anxiety problems, then reach out to someone who is a professional and, 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 and talk about it, you know, and, and, and already knowing that you have a professional team, Maybe also physiotherapists that, that, you know, you have the shoulder problem. Yeah, I mean, of course, you can, like, I, I, you can use these balls to, to, to help yourself a little bit. Yeah, but to have someone who actually gets rid of it, get professionals on your team. Because every third-rate soccer player and every second-rate tennis player has a team of five to ten people. And why are we supposed to do everything by ourselves? I think that's ridiculous. So I, I think creating a team in this very demanding journey is something that I want to, uh, uh, I want everybody to have. So yeah, <laughs> there you go. Wow, this is so wonderful. Uh, thank you so much for, for your you generosity so and, and spending so much time with us, sharing these great ideas. Uh, um, the more, the more we can we we can hear this this kind of attitude, the better. Uh, you're you're being so positive with with that with this situation. You know, it's, of course, it's a difficult situation for for all musicians, but there are benefits in it and uh, uh, opportunities to to change for for the better. And um, we thank you so much for this. Uh, thank you. Thank and you then, thank of course, you. bravo to to the, our four students. Uh, for for playing today and, and being part of this, um, and uh, I'm I'm so glad personally just to have been able to meet you um, that way. I hope in so, person. I hope, I hope person in person soon. very soon. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all for for watching uh, this tiny dorm uh, masterclass. Uh, have a wonderful weekend or rest of your weekend, depending depending on where you are. And um, I guess the next one will be uh, this coming Thursday. It's a violin masterclass. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.